Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the SEO Growth Podcast. Uh, today, I'm here with Sandy John, who's the Director of Demand Gen at Outplay, which is a sales engagement tool. And we're actually not talking about SEO today. We are talking about branding. Um, we're talking about how Outplay turned brand, a branding campaign into a lead gen machine. And I think this is really interesting, especially coming into this year where people are making really tough decisions. How do I see the ROI and what I'm doing? Uh, so we're going to talk about how to think about branding campaigns and one successful branding campaign, probably more success, actually more than one successful branding campaigns that turned into lead gen that had significant ROI for Outplay. How's it going, Sandy? Doing great. Thanks a lot, Meva, for having me on this podcast. I really love to talk about it. I think um, it's normally when somebody like a title like Demand Gen, you'd expect me not to talk about branding. Uh, but <laughs> act I've actually seen the benefit of what brand can do for demand. Uh, and I think we should probably be doing a lot more of that brand stuff as well. But yeah, I would love to chat about it. No, I think honestly, when I read, when I first learned what Demand Gen was, I was like, wait, is this just paid ads? And then... People are saying, no, it's not paid. It's not just paid ads. Even though a lot of it is paid in terms of the channels that you're actually choosing. Yeah. But I think now that I've learned more about demand gen, it is a big part of it is branding. It is just building the brand through dark social, through social channels, basically. Am I getting it wrong? No, you're right. You're spot on. I think it's, I think it's, it's basically that it's building demand. However, you need to build demand, uh, whether it's dark social, whether it's organic, whether it's anything, right? It's essentially how you build demand. I think brand plays a big role in that. And so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So before we jump into this uh, branding campaign that you did, tell me, give us a quick intro about you and Outplay. So um, a little bit about my history. So I actually didn't start off as a marketer. So I think I was, I was started off as a sales guy. I think uh, um, all my life I've been in sales, tech sales and all of that. And at some point in life, I had this, um, this moment, almost an epiphany, where I decided, hey, maybe it's marketing that's where I want to be. Because I think I had an opportunity of doing both at one firm, somewhere in the middle. And I just felt, hey, I was a lot more drawn towards marketing. And then I worked for almost half a decade in a company called Freshworks that went IPO some time back. I did a bunch of marketing things in marketing and SDR as well. So that's where I kind of made the transition almost. Um, and at Outplay, I take care of demand. Essentially, uh, for the for all practical sake, everything marketing help drive demand within the firm, whether it's through paid, whether it's through organic or any other kind of means, branding, of course. Uh, that's what I do here. And so I love, I'm always challenging myself with learning new tech, learning new things that are in marketing because there's so much every day. There's new things that are coming up. Uh, while keeping the baseline simple, mm -hmm. we're always trying to find newer ways of doing stuff. So, yeah. Love it. I mean, you're lucky that you have a background in sales then when you're now running demand for a sales software. Yeah. So you're already in the heads of the people that you're marketing to. Spot on, yeah. And I, it, it worked as an advantage for me in my previous role as well, because eventually we think about marketing. A lot of what we do is for sales, creating those opportunities for sales. I kind of all always had both the, the, the shoes of the salesperson as well uh, as to what would they typically expect from a deal and whatnot. So mm -hmm. it really has helped me that they had both the, the exposures in both sides. Love it. Okay, so today we're here to talk about the call of fame or call of fame. Uh, tell us about tell us about this branding campaign and and yeah. we'll talk dive into the hypothesis and all of that, but just t tell us what it is. Yeah, so um, the call of fame in a sense is recordings of sales or SDR. So typically the origination of this, uh, the idea was if you go online, you can find email scripts, you can find LinkedIn message scripts, you can find calling scripts as well. But where can I actually find calls? Because typically what will happen is, let's say you're an SDR or salesperson, you come into a company, you will pick up, you will learn a bunch of things. You will learn stuff online. You will learn, um, you can, you can you go and go into your company, you can listen to recordings and figure out how people say but there's no general public library available of actual call recordings themselves because no matter what script you work on when you call, when it actually happens, there are a lot more smaller nuances that come into play. And sometimes listening to those and finding better ways of doing that is will make you a better person when you pick up the phone. So that's the origin, the germ of the idea came from that. Hey, do we, we need something for our own SDRs to help them get better. Uh, why can't we make something like this public? And then we put it out to folks and said, hey, we want to do something like this. Would you be interested in giving your calls? Of course, we'll keep, uh, we'll make sure that all the private information, uh, person information of the other person is kept uh, uh, 
confidential as much as possible so you don't really know who they're talking to but at least you have an idea of how they're pitching and all of that stuff so that was the idea and it kind of just took off the moment we started putting it because it didn't exist um before it doesn't exist until now but i think that was the whole idea of the doing the whole thing so you'd have people submit submit their calls and then would you do a, like a live event reviewing them so that's the, or yeah, what do you do a, with the that's a great question yeah so in fact it, more recently we've done that so typically what we've done is um when we publish a call online so we we have this thing about we we'll of course publish calls that we felt were great calls we get a lot of submissions we don't publish all of our submissions um and we tell folks that hey we'll select the ones that we think were great calls in that larger sense that will contribute to the larger piece and what not um the other thing that we do and good point that you mentioned so we recently created this property called sale of fail um it was at an offshoot of all of this the idea of sale of fail is fail of was typically do tear downs of emails and calls um and the, the we did a first show recently i'm going to come up with another show as well we will actually pick up call recordings and say hey what we felt were great things that happened on that call versus something else right so i think largely we want to do something like that so that's the next part of of this particular exercise yeah love it um, these are all really cool initiatives by the way i'm not an sdr or an ae but i do all of the sales right now for flying cat marketing so all of this stuff is pretty yeah. interesting for me as well Um so what what was your hypothesis when you launched this campaign? What did you think or hope was going to happen or what did you tell people who were investing in it was going to happen? So I think um our initial thought process was I mean we knew it would work from the point of view of it didn't exist before. Uh we also felt we I think we took an internal stake of like hey would we ourselves use something like this because we've got SDRs we've got sales people is there a genuine use case inside and i think the larger thought process for us was hey forget about in fact when we started the campaign the idea was forget about how many leads you might get through this just forget about that part is there something we can contribute largely to the community of sales folks and sdr folks that can actually be beneficial for them apart from doing everything else so we said okay we started from there we said okay call this something is an idea like this might actually work because we would use it ourselves for sure because we need our sdr to get better our sales people to get better let's just put it out there let's see if we get at least 100 people interested for whatever it's worth um let's see if at least 100 people can pick up this idea and see what it is it just took off today we have more than 1000 subscribers to something like this um we also had a press article written about something like this that exists in the past and all this stuff just came up organically we didn't pitch for it we didn't ask people to do it it just came and we continue to get calls so it's it's a library now that we have more than 30 plus calls um and every other week we keep publishing newer calls so then people keep submitting to us uh none of in fact in the entire gamut of stuff i would say only like three or four calls are actually outplay calls that's as in our folks doing calls and more often than not we'll go there to our folks unless the call was like a superior call or if we are not getting anything in the week then we'll just pull up something from our own repository but literally from that big mass we have only three of which is ours so it's a it initially started off at 100 just moved to 1000 and just keeps growing number of subscribers coming to something like this how, how do you incentivize people to submit their calls so yeah so we have an incentive so we we give them a 50 dollar voucher a starbucks voucher typically um so we tell them hey, you can submit your calls uh, if we publish your call then we will will pay you because we're not, we're not going to publish everything um yeah. so more often than not people end up it's they feel it's 50 dollars is good enough for them and they would love to see their call and most of the sdrs ae who are submitting always acknowledge it and they are sharing it in their networks and their people are also interested in seeing what it is so it it generally catches fire like that because we're not necessarily and we don't care who's submitting it so it doesn't matter where it's coming from or there's yeah. no restrictions on all of that it's just that for us it's important the quality and a lot of the times we even put calls that don't necessarily end up in meetings sometimes it's just the way the sdr or the ae went through that call and we love the fact that that was so well done it doesn't matter the meeting didn't come it's fine it could be doesn't have to always be a positive out meet outcome generally so we even publish those so it's a mix of stuff so what what were the original kpis um i know you said let's just do something that's useful uh for our audience um but th- there must have been something that you're measuring to see whether it's working or yeah. not yeah So I think that's what I was thinking right so I think the first the MVP version if one has to say that was around 100 people subscribing to this that's all I think we we said we'll 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 give it like 3 weeks we'll see if 100 people submit if 100 people submit we'll 
keep doing more of this. We'll invest time and effort in it. Because if you think about it, largely for us, it was all the time and effort. There was nothing else. Like it was time and effort. And of course, you reward people who submit calls for you. Apart from that, there was nothing. We've never promoted this on paid. We've never tried to get press paid media to write for us or ask someone pay them money to promote this on social. None of that. Right. It's it's very organic kind of growth, literally. Mm -hmm. um, so when we started, I was like, OK, let's get 100. If it's worth the effort, then we'll do more and do more things, invest time, effort, energy and try to promote. Um, and that's where we started. Right. So when we crossed that 100 number, like almost in the first week itself. And we're like, oh, okay, 100 is, we definitely, this is going to work for us. Let's just go a little more big on this. Right now it's around 1,000. That's, that's super exciting. So, okay, so you had thousands of people sign up for this. Um, when they're subscribing to this, do you already consider them a lead? Not necessarily yes. always. I think um, what we do is, I mean, we have a certain criteria of the kind of company that we would go after as well, typically in our larger database. So when I say lead, uh, it's it's a little, it's a mix and match. Not all of them are leads always. Sometimes more often than not, these are just SDRs curious to get interested. If, for example, and I'll be open here, right? If there is a company that we are targeting that's on that list, then we might reach out to that SDR and try to make an, get an introduction to their manager mm -hmm. or whoever. Uh, if it, if they're not really okay. part of that list that we're going after, we'll, if they organically sign up, we're not going to shop them. We would love for them to sign up for the product. Uh, but we'll keep them invested in other stuff. So whenever we update, so we always do this. So whenever we update a new call to the library, we'll let them know. So they get an email saying, hey, so every okay. fortnight, there's one email that goes out, says new calls. Of course, they can submit to our other prop. I mean, subscribe to other properties as well of ours. And that's on their choice. Um, and it's only when we see a company that we're targeting is on that list, then we will go to that SDR and say, hey, could you introduce us to your manager? We'd love to have a chat about how Outplay can help you folks. If you found this useful, of course. Everybody else, they go into some kind of a nurture program in general. Um, but most of them are very soft CTAs. We're not expecting them to turn up as demos and all that. Okay. If it happens, it happens. More often than not, it actually happens because people are curious, okay, who's this Outplay who are doing these things? And then uh, we have a free version of the product. So more people will sign up for that initially and try it out and all that. Okay. Nice. When you launched, how long ago did you launch this? You said it was 2020, I think. 20, last year. So 2022 was when we launched it um, around okay. Q2 sometime. So yeah, we're probably nearing a year from this year. So what other channels were you working on at the time and how many resources did that this take away from those? Literally, I think this was just one and a half resource working on this particular project. Okay. Uh, and yeah, not not much because I think it was very simple for us. I think it was it was more about how do we get those calls, where do we yeah. pick them up, um, how do we incentivize these folks, and we created like a playbook around it, like a single document which said, "Hey," okay. and it, it, the project has also changed hands a couple of times as well. People moving to different projects, or people leaving, and all of that. So today we have a playbook on how it can be done, and anyone in the company can actually pick it up and run it. It's become it. that easy now. Um, so it's not very people dependent per se. It's very process driven. So you even know how to reach out, whom to reach out to, typically what copy they would use, what happens if they get the lead inside. All of that's in paper. So um, and it's very clear. So everyone knows what they need to do. So yeah, we keep running it. We just actually changed hands a couple of times in the last year or so. So yeah, it's straightforward. It it's um, super effective in terms of driving signups. Anybody can. It's so well process processized uh, that anybody can pick it up and do it. So yeah. and also sounds pretty cost effective. Yeah. And what I find interesting as well is it's a branding campaign. Um, but when a lot of people are thinking branding campaigns, it's more. I don't know what can we do around our brand and like how do we show our brand more but it wasn't really about that it was actually the fact that it was branding was just how do we do something really cool that's not necessarily um a lead gen campaign but something that gets our name out there and that people yeah. people want to engage with us is that how you yeah. were looking at it i think the way we thought of yeah yeah and i think just to add one more point to what I, everything what you said was spot on right i think just to add one more point to that larger piece, I think one of the key things we were looking at is whatever the campaign we want to try and do, how does it, because there are so many things we've also done, right? We've tried like like everything that all the vanilla stuff that everyone does. Um, you do awards and you do a bunch of this, you do like a bunch of webinars and all of that stuff and you try and 
get you give prizes to a bunch of people to do everything we've tried all of that some of them have worked some of them haven't worked i think when we switched our hats to the point of we have to run this campaign as something that we will contribute seriously to this to that group that we target which is typically sdrs and aes and sales folks it has to be meaningful for them and it can't be something that they've always seen how are we going to be different from everything that they're seeing today because what's the difference between company x and companies y email scripts they're almost the same yeah. they can't be too many things this didn't exist so i think for us it was like hey the fact that it doesn't exist it might get interesting would we as the users ourselves we also had sales people would they use it yeah they would use it that was enough for us and we said let us go out there so i feel like uh, like you said, absolutely said right the typical branding campaigns are not like that typical branding campaigns are like how do we get the name outplay out there uh, like how do we what do we do we take a skyscraper and like we just put like this big banner or hire a bunch of buses and have this blimp and all that um, and previous companies of mine have done stuff like that right? and and you need sometimes you need to do that sometimes you need to go out there and do it but then we weren't playing with too many budgets we weren't playing with too much of that stuff so we said hey within this gamut what can we do we said let's just try something different and it just was different and we have good fortune people uh, ate it up nicely and so and we we've had like i remember um, i've gone into conversations with other sales influencers while they've openly some of them have called it out in public some of them haven't but even in closed doors they said like wow that campaign is pretty cool i would in fact some of them have recommended i would love to come on a show where i can actually review those calls and tell people how and that was like okay that was coming from some some of the big big names in the space who actually say something that is valuable then we knew okay we did a good thing yeah. by putting it out there yeah exciting okay so now it's lead gen you know that it's working well yeah. as a as a lead gen campaign uh yeah. are you doing anything different with it since you discovered that are you measuring yeah, it so different think, or implementing yeah. it differently i think now what now now there are two essential nurture tracks that run for us one one nurture track and one active engagement nurture track being if something is not necessarily an ideal customer profile for us we still uh, engage with them either through this call of fame initiative or of general marketing initiatives to just keep them engaged so that like hey i know you may not necessarily buy from us but maybe in time you feel like buying sure the second group is where we have an abm list so we know hey here are the kinds of companies we are going after and if they hit that list typically what will happen is you'll find at least 20% of that list might or might actually be the people we want to go after uh when i say mm-hmm. people i mean companies we want to go after so we pass on that list to our sdr folks who actually look at and reach out and get to people and say okay um we'd love to have a chat with one of your your managers or your sales leaders or whoever could you help us make an introduction given about something that like this we'll talk about outplay so that's how we bucket them into two groups typically and that's how we typically outbound to them okay um now it sounds like this has pretty significant roi i got two questions has it become predictable like as you go you get you can estimate that you're going to get x amount of leads um and are you able to f- forecast a bit the roi from this we're getting there i don't think we're it's 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 set into that kind of rhythm as yet and i think we're working towards making that happen i think today what happens is it's it does an ebb and flow whenever there's a big launch about it in social then we'll get a few leads that come and sign up i think now what we're thinking about is considering we've done a lot of the organic stuff we're considering how can we make the paid initiatives work for this now um because we've seen oh. to bring in some level of so we're actually thinking the other way now we're saying hey we built the whole organic base when we say paid we mean not just like google ads and all of that stuff but uh, can we run a sponsorship on someone else's newsletter for example trying to promote something like this um so we're trying to see how can we expand it even more uh like expand the reach even more and then we might just pull down the paid and keep running the organic flow per se because like you said i think what we're also trying to achieve is can we make this a solid lead gen channel itself today it's it's it exists but like you said it's not super predictable in saying hey i know exactly i will get x number of leads from the call of fame every month it's not that predictable Uh, i've got some semblance of what those numbers are but can i fully count on it right now no i think now we're now we're going mm-hmm. to the molds of okay how do we expand this how can we make this 1000 10000 for example um but make it more predictable without blowing too much of money so i think that's the thinking right now yeah how has this uh, particular campaign changed the way you're thinking about branding campaigns since th- since then this is a very great point right i think I think it's it's helped us twofold. I still think you need to do the other branding campaign that one talks about the 
the traditional branding campaign, right? Where you like either you're, you're you're putting up this big name or you're trying to find run a couple of ads and all of that stuff. I think those still are relevant. I don't think they're irrelevant. Um, but you need to have a combination of that and this. Uh, you still need to be mm-hmm. doing stuff that can break the. I think for smaller companies, something like this might really work well. Um, for bigger companies, I'm not sure. Depends. I mean, how much leeway they have, how many projects that they can run typically at the same time and all that. I think you need to have a combination. I think for us, it's also been for every like it's it's like almost for every two th- two of this, we need to have one brand campaign, like one larger brand yeah. campaign per se. All totally depends on budgets, costing, everything else will come into play eventually. Um, but I think for us, it's always what's the next call of fame that we do? Like, what's the next initiative for us? It's like, how do we build? Because everything else has been done. So it's not like there's going to be some super original thinking on we come up with a new idea. I always believe good ideas are always stolen. You just take a great idea from someone else and just make it much better version of it. And then you just push it out there. Um, I, I think we really got lucky with call of fame because it doesn't exist. But I think every other marketing campaign, there's some version of it that exists somewhere today. It's not truly original. Yeah. So we'll have to find a way to make it, create that niche within that space or really make it our own. And that's where we, we're thinking like that. Okay, how do we do something like that? Because you're not always going to get a call of fame. You need to find something else as well. So that's how we're thinking. So yeah. I think for every two of this, maybe do one of that as well. But yeah. Excellent. All right. Well, whoever's listening, if you have calls uh, and you want to look at other calls, listen through other calls, I certainly am going to go dive into that. Make sure to submit them to Call of Fame. Um, Sandeep, we love talking to you today. Thanks for thanks for joining me and sharing the story. Thanks, Mima. Pleasure. Pleasure here as well. And uh, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to connect with Sandeep. Uh, where's the best place to connect with you? LinkedIn is the best. I'm fairly active in LinkedIn these days. So yeah, just find me on LinkedIn. Sandeep John Outplay, you'll find me. All right. Perfect. Uh, yes. So connect with Sandeep, connect with me if you're not connected yet and let us know if you liked the episode and thank you so much and see you next time. Thank you.